And let's listen to just a few seconds of it real quick so you know what we're getting into. There you go. So that is uh, it's pretty full on, and the whole point of this song was to be kind of uh, tech death over the top, tech death metal for those uh, those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I say tech death. And um, you know that that style of music, it's technical death metal. It's fast. It features a lot of technicality, both on guitars and drums, and you're going to be relying on a lot of techniques such as blast beats and blast beats. There, there's a ton of different kinds of blast beats. This might be a really good way for you guys to start to understand the basic concepts behind programming them, what they are, how to program them, and how they can drastically affect the sound of the riff. I think at this point, we've seen how much drums influence the sound, the context, and the feel of the same riff in different parts of the song. You could just drastically change how, how these riffs sound, right? And, you know, if you listen to just these drums by themselves... Like, we're really staying within one dynamic range, and if we're, we're dropping down, it's for things like blast beats or maybe fills. You know, maybe I should have stuck to one philosophy, but I just did it kind of case by case, sometimes I want the fills to sound robotic. Like a lot of the hallmarks of especially more modern tech death is the reliance on samples. Having something like programmed drums where you can get the power, but you're actually getting more variation than, than a lot of the one-shot sounding death metal albums that are out there and tech death albums that are out there. It, it's it's kind of cool. You get to really walk that line very, very carefully. You get to thread that needle if you, if you program the velocities just right and if you just introduce some variation in some of the fills and I can show you all of those things like for example anywhere that you see slight variances here in velocity is me attempting to do something like that things like that we have a lot going on as you can see this song is at 2 243 bpm there's a lot of dots on this grid right here and I can show you kind of what I had in mind you know for reference the click is like this This is kind of a lead-in. I'm not even entirely sure how I hear that. I think I wrote this with that first note being the downbeat. And when this comes back later, it does come back with a groove. This is the same as the first riff, but just, let's remove that click, with, uh, with a groove. And that's where it sort of repeats there. And it's a 4-4 four, four groove, so I know I have the snares all over the place. And then we kind of have these blasts just coming from everywhere that are just maybe making it sound even more random than it is. But it is just 4-4, four, four, and there's a way to hear it where it is just 4-4, four, four, and that would be sort of the correct way to hear it. But you can hear it however you choose. So that would make this the downbeat. And that would be the, the where it repeats. So let's take a look at this. Right off the bat, we have what was introduced to me as the split blast. And this is traditionally played on the ride, but you can do it on just about any cymbal. You can do it on the ride, what's very common would be to be doing these sort of eighth notes between the, the, the ride edge and then the bell on the main hit. We don't have it on the main hit because we've chosen to go with a cymbal here, right? And actually, very unrealistically, we've chosen to go symbol on the left. It would be a symbol on the right, generally, because it'd be close by. We're, we're going so fast here that a drummer would need to have something that's close by, right? This would just be like that, that motion. That motion I said before, like the, the heavies on the bell and then going up on the right. What you would consider doing generally is 
reducing the volume of those in-between hits. However, with this being tech death and like a heavier thing, we want intensity, so we're gonna leave that up. So that we can hear those in-between hits. And what this is doing is interacting with the kick in a way where it's matching every kick. So that would generally be played between both feet. What happens is for the blast beat part, you're gonna put snares of varying volumes in between on the upbeat 16th note. So that's in between these matched up kicks and ride cymbal, right? We listen to how that sounds. This is a, it's a divisive sound right here because some people don't like blast beats. Some drummers hate playing blast beats. They had to grow on me, to be honest. Like, until I started to listen to this kind of music, I didn't entirely understand blast beats. They're kind of obnoxious. It's like, where, where is the one? And, and you know, where, where is the rhythm, where is the groove? But the craziness and the energy that you get from something like this, and when paired with the right riff, I think it'd be cool. If it's maybe just the entire song, then that could be a bit tiresome and a bit boring. But using these in, in, in short bursts, short bursts of blasts, you know, that, that may be the way to approach it. Now, what velocity should you use for the snare? That depends largely on the sample that you're using, so experiment with that. And that's something that I will be adjusting, even section by section. So here I think I found, what, like 50 works for this? If you bring it down, you get this ghost note thing, you barely hear it. And if you're going for a more realistic thing, that might be more accurate to the velocity that an actual drummer could get out of it, or most drummers could get out of it at 243 BPM, which is very, very fast. We're calling these 16th notes, but truly, these are effectively 32nd notes at 120. So this is just extremely, extremely fast and technical stuff. So it makes sense that a lot of drummers might struggle with getting air out of that, right? However, we're going for uh, hyper-realism here. And I mean, you could go all the way and just go for those, uh, those rim. This is, this is just over the top, getting rim shots in between because it's just, I don't know the physics would allow that, but that would sound like this. And that's a bit of a mess, right? So we know that we want somewhere in between those. Probably get down a center hit. So on, on the get good drum stuff, we generally have the rim shot mapped up at the top because those will be the loudest and hardest hits. And then you can sort of hear when it becomes a center hit. Has less of that, that sort of smacky transient in the attack. And then we get what are more aggressive but still kind of acceptable blast beats. And then it's just how much of your riff is it covering up? I think I found that this was just a good compromise where you could still hear that you have these snares in between these very fast kicks. But you can still hear the guitar riff. And we're going to be doing a lot of these. You know, we talked about these doubles. Well, the doubles have become fours, you know. Because at this speed, it takes about the same time. And you can get doubles between snares and kicks and toms and all that stuff. And, and make very sort of fast, impressive things that are actually not as difficult to play as they sound. And most drummers would be quite happy playing those. Might even offer a little bit of a break over so, sort of sustained playing with uh, hands or, and or feet.